put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So, while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Thing Game Review. I'm not sure exactly how long after the movie this is supposed to take place. I haven't been able to find out. Wiki, the game itself, nothing. Nowhere have I been able to find, I don't know, let's say it's a day after, or a week after, or something. Anyway, following the events of the movie, and do note, I will have to spoil some of the concept stuff in the movie. I'm not going to be spoiling specific details in this video of the movie, but yeah. And do note, the beginning of this game does spoil the ending of the movie, which might seem obvious, but just for the record. Anyway, you're sent in as a... you and your military unit, your Captain Blake, are sent in to investigate what happened. And basically, there, there are two military teams, your beta team, and you, were, you are sent to the American outpost, while Alpha Team are sent to the Norwegian camp. And, yeah, you don't spend an awful lot of time at the American outpost, then you go to the Norwegian camp, and where you go from there, I suppose I really shouldn't say that would be giving away spoilers. Excuse me. But yeah, so you go into investigate, and quite swiftly the game introduces the concept of the thing, with it being able to imitate people perfectly, and there being tests to determine if you're still human or not, and once that is all set, and after some fairly decent build-up, not quite AVP2 level, even though this game feels an awful lot like the AVP games, although both of those are better. Anyway, once with all that out of the way, you are attacked by things, and you have to manage your little team. Now, before I get too into this review, for those who want to know if this is worth seeking out, I liken this to... is that the term? I compare this to Enter the Matrix. It's a rough around the edges, not technically good video game tie-in of a movie that a lot of people love, and it's an awful lot of fun if you look past. It's a guilty pleasure. If you look past the stuff that doesn't work and just enjoy all the stuff that does. I should also say one thing that is the same for both games also is that this is rushed. And I have no idea how that even happened with this coming out 20 years after. Maybe suddenly they just woke up and said, oh crap, 20 years have already passed, we gotta get this baby out right now. Maybe they wanted it to coincide with like 20 year anniversary or something. But yeah, it's definitely rushed. Basically, the game is a third-person 
shooter and already you can see that this is not really the right way to give the thing video game treatment. Third person shooter, shooters in general make sense for other 80s creatures such as Alien and Predator. And yes, I know the first Alien movie came out before the 80s. Because those are fast, even if the aliens arguably not seem to be that fast in the first movie, but still. And another really important aspect is that those are physically hunting down the human prey. So it makes a lot of sense to make games out of those, where you play as a human fighting them off, or as either of the species hunting humans, and sometimes the other alien species. The thing is slow. It's also not that keen on just moving around in thing form. It hides in humans. And in this game, of course, it didn't do that that much. You fight a lot of things, mainly smaller ones, and yeah, they are just running around in thing form for no discernible reason, and no, it makes no sense. It's just so that there could be enemies because this is a shooter. Now, the... I suppose a good place to start is the infection. Basically, annoyingly, you can't be infected yourself. That would be really cool if suddenly you started turning in front of the camera. Remember, third person camera, through and through. Or there's a first person mode, but I'm gonna get into that later. If suddenly you're just turning, you're like, no, I thought I, I thought I was careful enough, and like, you know, game over, you were infected. So that would be awesome, but no. However, every single one of your team members can. Basically, if they are around the, the things too much, if they get attacked too often, eventually they will become the thing. And this might happen mid-combat. Let that sink in. You, you can have up to four members in your squad. Say you're fighting, let's say, two big things. And you have four guys backing you up, all of them armed. Suddenly, one of them turns. Suddenly, you only have three guys backing you up, and you're fighting three big things. Yeah. And this, this is literally going to happen if you are not careful enough. And obviously, the chances of that happening more than once in the same battle are going to increase exponentially. So, basically, you... Yeah, before I get into how you prevent it, I have to talk about how awesome it looks. Basically, it's, it's just going to erupt out of the mood, like, like a Hulk transformation, the Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing, Wolfman, that kind of thing, where just out of their body, like their arms are going to be shedded and out will come these bigger thing arms, you know, that it had to make room for them so the arms just peel off like a banana and it just mutates hideously and becomes one of these nightmarish, grotesque creatures. I don't know, but I would think that Botine would, like, I think Carpenter actually does like this game, but yeah, the, the designs actually are really horrifying. And seeing one of your squad mates turn, which, like I said, this might happen mid in the middle of combat. It also might happen 
outside of combat. And sometimes that I can't really claim that it's a random point, even though that would be fantastic. But still, it's it's really effective to look at at least. And the now the, the obviously with it being a video game and there being a lot of encounters, they can't make up different ones for all the different... I, I don't really have a number, but there are at least a couple, maybe a handful, different iterations of man-sized things. And some are slightly bigger than man-sized. I'd say that when, when your buddy's turn, it's roughly man-sized, but some of the others are... So some of the ones you encounter are bigger than that. Now, fighting infection. Basically, like I said, you want to make sure your buddies don't get attacked by them too much. And you can also check there are these blood test kits. And, yeah, I'm not sure they technically... You can't trust them completely, sadly. It's one of the parts where the game is a little underwhelming, but I do, I, kudos for the idea, it's, it's really cool, and one thing you can do with these blood test kits also is you can test yourself, and this, again, you can actually become infected, but it will show your squad that you are still human. Now, this is a good time to get into the squad. Basically, like I said, four tops, and there are three different types. And it doesn't have to be one of each type on your team. You may have, yeah. Basically, there is the soldier, who I'm not sure is that distinguished. I'm not sure he's a better shot than the others, particularly. And the... Before, before getting too much further, I should say... I quite like Spoonie's review of the game. I really don't share his hatred for the game, but I completely understand it. And if I had had high expectations for this game, I probably would have been doing a similar video. I will say though, yeah, real quick, I, re I agree with almost every single point he makes. Some of them I just don't think ruins the game as much as he feels. One thing I will contest though is that he says that the, all three are really horrible shots, all three character classes. Technically, Everyone in this game is a horrible shot. Your character is as well. The recoil is ridiculous. They really messed up the balancing of this. I, I get what it is. You have a lot of bullets. They, they make you able to carry like 10 clips total of 50 bullets each for like your submachine gun. So obviously, if you can hit with every single one of those bullets, you're going to have no trouble at all. What they should probably have done is like allow you to only carry a few clips for the gun, and then not mess with the recoil. Anyway, actually I suppose I should real quickly get into the first person perspective, because that might be an attempt to address that actually. The first person perspective Again, it's like Leonard in the Matrix. You can't aim unless you're in the first person perspective. There's an auto aim for the rest of it. And yeah, the recoil is ridiculous unless you're using like the shotgun or the pistol. And yeah, again, all these different weapon classes. Again, not very the thing. Now, the first person perspective allows you to lean slightly to the side, so you can sort of shoot from cover, although there is no cover system in this game. You can't even wall hug, like in the Matrix. And when you use first-person perspective, 
you have pretty well perfect aim, and it makes... Whenever you can stand, like, behind a corner and then peek out and shoot, you'll want to do it. It's much more effective. It's super effective. Now, getting back to the character classes, the other two character classes are the Medic, who can heal all of your units except himself. You can heal him, though. You can heal any member of your squad, which, again, I think is actually kind of cool. You can do a decent amount with your squad. You can, you can test them, you can heal them, you can heal yourself, you can test yourself. Now, the... So, so yeah, the Medic, you'll definitely want to keep alive. Now, the Engineer is the one you need to keep alive. And again, like Spoonie points out, it basically makes it an escort mission. I don't mind that too much personally, honestly. But yeah, basically, the infamous fuse boxes. Basically, there are two types of fuse boxes, and all of them need to be fixed. The basic ones, which you can fix, and the advanced ones, which only the engineer can fix. Now, the cool thing is, sometimes they actually use this for tension. If, and yeah, basically, when you get your engineer over to an advanced fuse box, keeping in mind that you have to keep him alive, you have to have at least one engineer if there's an advanced fuse box around. The game will immediately, you'll immediately get game over if your engineer dies, if your last engineer dies, and there's an advanced. There are, there are parts of the game you can't get through without engineers, but when he is standing there fixing it, you may very well have to provide cover fire for the, the entire duration that he's standing And they do this thing with like waves of enemies, which is pretty cool. Again, not very thing like, but I really feel like I should go into where the game is thing like. Real quick, the basic fuse boxes. You can fix those yourself. There's a meter that you have to fill. Now, while this is... While there is not always an enemy nearby when this is happening, that it is true sometimes. Sometimes you are fixing a fuse box and your squad will provide cover fire. And it's pretty cool. They do this thing where the camera is basically your, your head and face are, like, in the, in the middle of the screen, sometimes. It's at least close to the camera. And behind or to the side, you can see all these things coming in. It's, it's very alien-like, again. And y your squad just firing and shooting to get all these... Yeah, to kill all of them. And... That's pretty cool. It can be really, really intense of a game. And the, the really cool thing about doing that sometimes is when they don't, the camera might still shift to an angle and you're standing there trying to get this meter to fill, fearing that an enemy is going to burst out of somewhere. And that is quite cool. That, that's really good, good tension, I would say. Now, getting into where this is more like the thing. The atmosphere is admittedly not consistent, excuse me, but when it is there, it is quite effective. There are a few really inspired bits where basically there's a situation that feels like it could have happened in the movie. You have to figure out who is the thing at one point. There, Yeah, there's just some... And other than these few inspired bits, the first portion of the game, I'd maybe say the first half or so, genuinely feels like the movie, they're very, and at times, not all of the way. You're running around in the snow, you can literally, maybe not quite get lost, the, get lost. 
in the snow. The, the areas are not quite big enough for that, but they are big, and there is this sense of the, the horizon of, of it being... I mean, no, 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 not the horizon, the opposite of the horizon. You feel trapped in Antarctica. You feel like th there's just, there's snow everywhere I look. This and and the the effect of the cold weather is again they at least make an attempt to make it work. They have this freezing meter or something, this blue meter, which if it runs out, you will start losing health. I personally think it should have been that. Basically, you're a goner if it runs out completely, or maybe, I don't know, but that means that you can never stray too far. You can never take too long to wander the, the outside with this big snowstorm and snow everywhere, and you don't get to make that decision. You have to actually spend a lot of time out in the snow for bits of this game, especially early on. And this works really well because you really feel that fear that they did in the movie. This, this isolation, this physical isolation and this really threatening environment. And yeah, that just works really, really well. The, the game is basically survival horror, and in, in addition to being a, a third-person shooter. And I find that I die more often in this game than in most other survival horror games that I've played, even with, like, even accounting for difficulty settings, and I find that a lot of the time it's not even frustrating. This can be a really addictive game at times, and yeah, you just you really get into it. You want more. You want more of this icy cold that you have to avoid, and fearing that the the, the thing is suddenly going to pop out. See, that's that's also something that it gets quite good to the, the movie. Now, we're, the movie uh, infinitely better, obviously, with this tension of these characters that you get to know and you fear that they're gonna die or gonna turn out to be the thing, and suddenly one of them turns out to be the thing, where in this, it's not really that. Like, again, things are literally just suddenly gonna pop out of somewhere and attack you in thing form without there being any real yeah with, without having hidden in an imitation now the as your real quick note just so it's mentioned there is zero replayability value in this game there is nothing to do different it's entirely linear I think there's like three difficulty settings. I'm not even sure that changes anything other than your how wide an arc your arc. I'm not a geometric person. The 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 cone, the the size of the cone for auto aiming. Now and and in addition to that. It took me eight hours of real time to beat this game, and the in-game counter said something like four and a half hours, maybe four hours, four to five minutes. So, yeah, it's not going to be that long of a... yeah. Now, to get back to the, the bit about the characters, you don't really connect to the various characters. It's not like in the first obscure game where you are running around as the same characters for the entire game and you get used to them, you get to liking the dif different personalities involved. And 
they could die and you really don't want them to. You can literally play obscure and let almost everybody die. You almost don't need... I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I, it happened that some of my characters died. And I love it because I'm just a perfectionist like that. Anyway, in this you don't really connect to the characters, so it's more like, oh crap, another enemy, and oh man, awesome mutation thing, more than, oh no, not him. Now, another thing that this gets from the game, the claustrophobia of, again, the, the, remember it's the physical setting, the, the movie has these really effective, long dolly shots down tight hallways with a lot of little corners where something could jump out at you. This game has you running through hallways like that, and things do jump out at you, and it's that's really, really good. Although it is a little unfortunate that the AI is a bit... Meh. The AI literally has trouble with corners, and that's a bit awkward when you're fighting this horrifying creature and, oh, oh, okay, it, it can't quite make the corner, that's, yeah. Now, to, to get back to the squad stuff. Basically, you can give your squad just a couple of orders, in addition to what I've already mentioned. You can tell them to follow you or to stay where they are. And regardless, if they see, if they see something that they want to kill, they're going to try to kill it. Regardless of if they're standing where they are. And they're, you know, if they're standing where they are, they're not going to move to kill it. They're going to shoot from where they are until it leaves. And if they're following you, of course, they're going to follow you and try to kill things. And other than that, you can also tell your engineer, go a certain... You know, and, and this, I think, is really good. Basically, I mentioned before how the advanced fuse boxes, you have to provide cover fire for your engineer. It makes a lot more sense to, before you go to the place where you know you're going to have to provide cover fire, you just tell your engineer, go there, and then you follow him and get ready for cover fire. Because if you just go there, he's going to shoot back as well. And then, in fact, I'm not even sure you can give the order to fix something in the middle of a firefight. But anyway, at the same time, you can also, if you don't anticipate a firefight, you can just follow there, and once you have found a fuse box that needs fixing, an icon is going to appear over your engineer's head, and he's going to offer to fix it, basically. If you go close to him and then press use, he's going to go fix it. And, uh, yeah, that, that uh, it, it works quite well. I, I never really had problems with them not doing stuff like that. Other than that, oh, and you can also, you can give orders as a group to followers, say, and you can give them individually if you want. If there's one character that you're thinking he should, he would be safer here or something, you can, yeah. And you can, you control what weapons your squad has. Again, you're, you're the captain, so they follow your orders and Basically, you can give them any weapon you have, and you can carry up to two, two of every weapon. It's, it's just like the Ark, only you know, more bullets. And you can, of course, give away, you can give away both of them, but then you don't have that weapon. And it's like, do I want my squad to be armed? with submachine guns, or do I want a submachine gun for myself? And 
and you can pretty much give any weapon you have to your allies. I did not encounter many, at least. I'm not really... No, I'm not going to give away what they are, but... Yeah, and you control how much ammo they have. You can... You can't take ammo bit by bit. You can only... There's an order called take away the gun he has and all the ammo he has. You can't take bit by bit. But when you give a weapon, you also have to give ammo and you give clip by clip. And that also presents some interesting situations. Again, sometimes they go out of their way to make sure you have full ammo, which is a little... A little boring. Again, because you can carry so much, you can literally carry 10 clips for, I think, any weapon. Or that, pretty much any weapon. Now, you... But, but yeah, so sometimes you don't have a lot of ammo, and maybe you want to keep at least one strong weapon for yourself, and you have to think, do I want to... do I want good cover, cover fire, or do I want good, uh, a good gun for myself? That is, and, and, now the, and, and the, the, the bit with the giving them clips and such, they will literally run out of ammo in the correct, in, in the time that they should, if you're, uh, yeah, now, that segues nicely into the trust system because giving someone a gun is one of the better ways to engender trust whilst taking it away is a really... yeah, if, if you want your squadmates to trust you, you should probably let them keep their guns or at least give them a replacement one. Spoonie ha criticized this as well and I personally think it makes sense. You have to remember, this is the military. These are not strangers meeting each other for the first time. It's like, oh, here, have a gun. Okay, now I trust you. These are military men, and it literally is just, do I trust that you're not the thing, or don't I? And if someone gives you a weapon, you're more likely to trust that they're not the thing. Just my two cents. Now, the... Basically, the trust system means that they're not going to follow your orders if their trust is too low, and in fact, if it goes to really low, they will eventually start attacking you, and... Yeah, you... It's also stuff that hurts the trust is also like pointing a gun at them or hitting them, even if it's by accident. Even though they might hit you. I guess because of the recoil. Now, the... the fear system is another way to also something that might end up with them not following your orders. They will actually eventually just stop moving and just crouch down, not moving, if, they, if their fear gets too high. And, and even if it, doesn't, if it isn't quite at that level, they won't take your orders if their fear is too high, simply because they're, they're too afraid. And you can, like, give them adrenaline shots to help deal with their fear, which I'm not entirely sure is completely accurate, realistically. Wouldn't that make them more likely to especially be afraid, or to especially fight, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, those are not very common, though. I did not find very many adrenaline shots. So, what you more want to do is take them away from the source of their fear, which is the d 
disturbing, gory aftermath of a conflict between man and thing that you encounter. And that's, again, where this is very much in the vein of the thing. Or at least it, it feels like something that would happen in, in a sequel, which this is, so... Now, the, the thing with trying, yes, not intentional, I swear, with trying to get them away from these gory sites is that there are many of them, and sometimes you are forced to, there, there's like something you have to do in a room, like you're, you're looking for something, and you have no choice, there to, to, you, and you just have to keep moving, and that, I think, does a good job of making it more intense. Again, you you are rushing through this. You you can't stay in the same place for too long. Because you don't want to lose your allies. Say it's the medic that completely wigs out. You just lost three healing for your entire squad except himself because you didn't hurry enough. And so that, that I, th I think that works really well as a ticking clock, and one that makes sense as well. And you literally do see, you, you both hear and see, sort of, signs of fear and trust. <laughs> Once when I took a guy's gun away, he flipped me off. <laughs> that is, yeah. And, yeah, literally, like, they... They might throw up or something if they're very afraid. And, and, and you can also typically tell, like, they'll say, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, if, they're, if the fear is not too high of a level. Now, the, the level design is not very varied. Again, I like the early areas where you're going through these camps, and you can literally recognize stuff from the 81 movie. And you're like, oh, this is that place where that happened, and such. And all this snow that you have to trudge through. But, well, not literally, it, it, you, you walk normally. It would be really awesome if they had that, though. Anyway. Other than that, it's not terribly interesting, and this this game was made by Computer Artworks, and if you've played Evolva, which I can't completely recommend that game, I did a video review of it, in case you're very interested, there are some really cool things in that game, though. Now, several of the things, both cool and not cool, not cool, man. Make its way, make their way into this. You, yeah, you can really tell that it's the same company, at least. The these these alien weapons that and and movements and such. And basically, for example, there are some some iterations of bigger things, and smaller ones, can, like, shoot, I don't know, some, some kind of, I, I guess it's throw-up, Spoonie refers to it as throw-up, but I guess that is basically what it is, and it'll slow you down. That is literally directly lifted from Evolva, and again, some of the movements and such. That in itself is fine. I. At first I wasn't entirely sure if, if I liked that or not, but you do see some kind of liquid being sprayed on the dogs in the 81 movie when the thing attacks. This is, that I'm not a spoiler. It happens in the first half hour of the movie. And that... So yeah, it, it could basically be that. Now the negative thing that carries over from Evolva is Again, this uninspired level design. It's worse than all of them, I'd say. But basically, they made nature that does not look like nature. We have these very sudden and convenient 
mountains, and there there will be like a path between two mountains, very very awkwardly shoehorned in. And excuse me, it's one of those linear games that really don't know how to hide that it's linear. You can pretty well see the path carved out and this is really, it is, and again, especially in the nature, and this is really, it really takes you out of it. It ruins the illusion. Now, I suppose this is a decent time to bring up in the, sometimes, in the outside bits, you are actually kind of lost. Now, while this can be, the, the outside bits, it can be effective, because, again, you have to actually find your way, and you can't see very far ahead, so you'll be moving a while before you actually see where you're supposed to go. Now, the problem is, there's a lot of time in this game where I'm just wandering around trying to answer three questions. Where am I? What am I doing? And why? I just cannot... It's, I think it's the story that is very poorly told. It's not very good at communicating to you why you... To what end you're doing something? Suddenly you're told, rescue that guy. Why? Who is he? What? What am I doing this for? And yeah, this it it gets quite annoying. And that also related to that is the fact that sometimes a level will end, and then at the start of the next level, you're wondering. Where did my squad mates go? Where am I? Why am I suddenly outside? I was inside just a moment ago. Where did I even come from? And it just really confuses you. It confuses me, anyway. Now, the... Linkara, in his, his most recent thing, themed video, I believe it was the review of the second issue of The Thing from Another World. In, in the text, in, in the end credits, in the information text, the bit that changes and isn't related to like what music is in it and such, he points out that the game pretty well forgets that it took place in and I would have to agree, because in this game there are CCTV cameras and there are gun emplacements which you can man. That's, yeah, I don't think they quite had the, like, I'm talking about, like, by remote, not like you get into one of these big machine gun nests or something. No, a pillbox, I think is the American term as opposed to the Danish term. Now, the, uh, the those sequences can be pretty cool, like you'll be using a CCT can CC, a camera, and zoom in, basically trying to find out, like, where, where am I going, getting, getting hints, and the man in the guns can be pretty cool. Now, the action, it is obviously not really thing like, but, it's really intense. There are some really fun fights in this. Again, it's mostly, I say a lot of it is in the first half or so. The last half of this game is where it kind of wears, wears thin and the plot becomes nonsense, but not, not giving any details of that anyway. Now, the Killing things, basically you can kill the smaller ones just with small arms fire. You 
don't have to do anything more. But the bigger ones, even the man-sized ones, you have to burn. But you can't just out, outright burn them. You have to bring their health down to the red. And I agree with Spoonie that it's not terribly complex, but it does still lead to some very intense confrontations. Because again, sometimes you're fighting more than one of these big things, and you have to juggle. You have to make sure that they... I mean, say you start burning the one that is, that's in the red. You still have to keep track of where the others are, and if they're not in the red, you can't just burn them. You can. You can try, but they're not going to die from it. And, again, add the, the throw up being thrown through the air, which slows you down, and it, it's really, really intense. And, again, usually not frustrating. There are things in this game that are frustrating, and I'll get to those, but the, ba the main action, if you just really, really love sort of the most lowest common denominator elements, I'm not saying they are lowest common denominator elements in the movie, but the ones that you can sort of take out and say, wow, those are, just, those are fun, even if... People who wouldn't appreciate the film on on a, on a deeper level and really appreciate all the hard work and all of, and and how yeah those people would still enjoy these aspects stuff like burning the things and the, these different permutations they take and how they just come at you once they have actually, you know, well, yeah, in the movie it doesn't come at you that much, and in this it does. Again, not really thing like, but it's, it's fun and it's really intense, and again, you are trying to keep your squad mates alive in a lot of these fights as well. I should also say, one thing that's also bad about the squad mate thing is, I already sort of mentioned, from one level to another, they might just disappear, or... Yeah, you just, you never get into it. In fact, also part of the storytelling, every single time that you meet someone that you know by name, that your character knows by name, he talks to him like they know each other, and the guy talks back like he knows you, and you are like sitting there like, you're like the third wheel. You're like, no, go on. I, I, I'm not even here. Just go on. It, it's really awkward. Because it's not that you get, it's not like in the movie where there are these effective, quick characterizations where you just see over the course of the movie, okay, well they're like that. You, you gather from interactions. In this, nobody has personality, basically. Like, maybe the main character who you play as, he's, he's just your average stock hero. Guess. I don't know, there, there are not many characters with personalities in this, and so, yeah, you don't get, you don't get attached to them, and when you see these quick little character bits where, I, I think the, the way to do it would have been if none of them knew each other, or, you know, give them personality, you know, if you want to do it the smart way, I guess. Now, the thing, killing the things. So yeah, you, you have to juggle and make sure that they don't kill your squad mates or they don't corner you and things like that. And something I really like, which I really don't think they had to do, and I've not seen it in many other games, is that when you try to burn the thing, it will literally shy away from the fire. And like, not, not like every now and then, it will literally do so, and it won't run into... Actually, typically when you're flaming them, you'll want to keep a fire extinguisher handy, because if you just set fire to the ground right in front of them, if you think they're going to rush at you, and then you set fire, because you, for some reason the flamethrower always shoots down, they are not going to move closer, and you have to extinguish the fire, and then get closer to them, and then flame, and they might, in turn, back away. And then we really get into that, the, the very defensive nature of the thing.
like in the movie. I think they really capture that very well. And again, very suddenly, if they feel they have an opening, they're going to come at you. And that really works well. And so, even though you may have to put in a lot of effort to burn these things, again, I don't think that gets frustrating now. And, and when they burn, sometimes the little parts of them will... It's not really that parts of them come off, that's what it's trying to emulate, obviously. But what it really is, is that one or two smaller things will spawn where the bigger one died. But again, that makes sense, and now you have to really quickly deal with them. And there you may want to switch away from the flamethrower, because they're much faster, and they, you don't need to use the flamethrower on the smaller ones. Now, the... This does feel like a bad PS2 port. I. Yeah, part two PC from PS2. Again, like on you know, the Matrix. I'm not sure it actually is. Maybe it was just primarily developed for the PS2, but basically, there is no vertical movement of the camera for, for you. You cannot look up and down. You can only look side to side. Maybe that's why he keeps shooting the flamethrower down. You, you can't, you know. Correct it upwards. Now, this... Actually, the vertical camera only exists in first-person mode. You can't, of course, look up and down there. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to aim very much. Now, this... is a bit annoying, and it kind of takes you out of it. I also wish that the auto-aim actually had a button for, like, next target or something, because you can't tell it disengage from that target. It doesn't happen often that it screws you over, I will say that. They really did a, a good job on, or maybe it's a lucky accident, anyway, happy accident, maybe, but bottom line is it does not screw you over very often. But it still would be nice to be able to actually properly control it. Now... The fire extinguisher... You... It's, it's one of the items. It doesn't... it isn't count as a weapon. And the nice thing is you can have an item and a weapon equipped at the same time. Basically, there are two indicators in the minimal HUD, one in, each, one in each of the lower corners, and the left one is your left hand, or item, and the right one is your right hand, weapon. When you press down the, the mouse button key, or the mouse, the mouse wheel, you switch which of them you cycle through with the mouse wheel. So, you can really swiftly switch what you are armed with or what item you're using. And items do include grenades, hand-thrown grenades. And this fire extinguisher and the med kits for yourself and your squad. Now, I suppose that does cover most of it. I'd say it does a pretty good job with the gore and violence as well. There are some really gruesome sights in this. I've already mentioned the when, when someone turns into a thing. And some of these that you come across are also quite gruesome. And it, it sort of the the fear of your squad sort of works to enhance the fear you feel yourself. That's again, the atmosphere a lot of the way really works. I'd say the game works best when you have a squad, especially for the bits where you stay for a long time with the same squad, without, yeah, without them disappearing between loading, for example. Because it really gets it, you, you get into this sense of I have to protect these guys, but there are some bits where you're running around on your own and 
they're just not as interesting. Now, the... Yeah, the, the, the fear... Actually, I suppose I did say... It. Real quick, just for... Fact-wise, the game saves by a checkpoint saving system, which I find works pretty well. I, there's good and bad to all different systems for saving, but, oh, and by the way, you do control when you save. It's not just you, you pass somewhere and then it saves. You actually physically have to save. And although it would have been nice if they had further increased the difficulty by giving you a limited amount of saves, like in, I think Resident Evil 2 at least had something like that. An obscure one had some. Both obscure games have a limited saving system, although I think both could have gone further. But yeah, that might have helped, but still it, it works fairly well. And the game does tend to be nice and let you save before the boss fights. And that is something I really should talk about. After I really quickly mentioned that basically the plot and the dialogue are basically just dumb and cliched. Yeah. And the plot is also really derivative, but I can't talk about that in detail. Now, yes, the the insane bosses. It's again, I think, a case of them overcorrecting stuff. Just the bosses, they tend to be really frustrating. That is, that is my main, that, that's the main source of frustration with the game, I would say. They, they tend to just throw too much at you and be too, too hard and not in the way that it's a real challenge and you... I mean, it's satisfying to beat them, but it would be more satisfying if it wasn't because the way you have to beat them is typically just this tiny little thing that you have to get exactly right, which the game kind of fights you on. It's, it's like dealing with a, an, an insolent child, I suppose. You, you know better. You, you know that this is the way it's supposed to go. They're not supposed to have candy at midnight. But they just keep fighting you on it. They just will not. It's just, it's continual, continually like that. It, the boss fights feel like the game wasn't even beta tested, frankly. Now, and the boss fights also tend to be, it's not a spoiler to say that there are, of course, theme encounters. Something that really feels strange with them is they're just kind of there. It's not like, well, this happened and then now there's this big thing here. No, they're just kind of there. And they're in your way, sir. Sorry, Spoonie. And so you have to... Yeah, no explanation given. One very much desired. Now, I believe that quite covers it. Yes. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.